Hi, Gabe Gelb. Thank you very much for joining me today on this Labor Day Sunday. Dory, I'm delighted to be here with you, and I just wish I had a uh, some kind of a liquor drink to, uh, to help <laughs> me get, get through this. It will be fine. So, so Gabe, uh, I will share with those that are listening in that at Emerson Uni uh, Unitarian Universalist Church, we do something I think fairly unique, which is on uh, a Sunday, we collect an offering, but it goes to uh, other other organizations, not ours. And in September, the organization that was chosen is called Justice Forward. And um, so we will be uh, taking our offering for the month of September to Justice Forward. And I understand you are a critical part of bringing Justice Forward into, into being. And so that's what today is gonna be about. But let's start with backing up a little bit. How long have you been a member of Emerson? I'd say about 30 years. 30 years, that's excellent. And, and tell me, um, from a little reading I've done, I think it was 2003, there was some formation. Tell me about how did this whole Justice Forward, how did it begin? Well, it was very interesting, uh, but I'd like to start with a little um, story. Uh, one day in the afternoon, I was sitting in the criminal courts building, uh, sitting in a jury box with a bunch of other Emersonians who had decided to see what was happening. And we were in the criminal courts building uh, in the court devoted to the um, Harris County Drug Court Foundation. And um, what was going on there was extraordinary because when you've been watching movies and television about what happens in the courtroom, <laughs> you are completely knocked out by the fact that uh, they've got a judge, they've got somebody appearing before him, they've got a bailiff, they've got a district attorney, and uh, there is a, a large uh, audience in the back, and we are sitting in a jury box observing all this, and and you know that the judge is gonna come down hard on this individual, because that's what they do. But that's what he didn't do. And he was a volunteer, uh, one of the many volunteers uh, who uh, work with the drug court. And uh, he was actually a criminal court judge who devotes one afternoon a week to coming in and listening to a um, person who had been admitted to the drug court uh, program of two years uh, in an attempt to teach him or her how to become clean. These are people who have already been convicted of a drug court offense. So if they had not gone through our program, they would have gone to state jail for up to two years. And when you think about what the ramifications are, uh, well, in this particular case, the person before the judge was a, a, a dancer, uh, a ballet dancer, a male fellow, and uh, he had been caught with, uh, with drugs and uh, he had been found uh, guilty. And he had his choice of going to jail or going through the drug court uh, program. Now, this is a two year program which starts with 60 days of residential treatment, and the rest of it is counseling and meeting with uh, various people and reporting to the court as to what's happening in your life. And uh, what happens is that if this person is telling a positive story, the judge is really encouraging him or her. And this is what is so different. You're in a criminal courts building where the judge is actually being very friendly to this person before him because he is on the same side of trying to get people to go through this two-year program. I love it. I love it. But Gabe, I'm going to step back a minute because I want to make sure those of us who are new to Emerson or newer um, understand you mentioned the Harris County Drug Court Foundation and I introduced 
the entity called Justice Forward, I know there's a history there between the inception of the Harris County Drug Court Foundation and this new Justice Forward. Tell me, if you would, how did this Harris County Drug Court Foundation come to be? Well, it came to be because uh, the UUA passed a resolution at its uh, General Assembly saying there ought to be alternatives to the war on drugs. And uh, Pippa Wiley, who was the president of our church at that time, called a meeting. We had some discussions and we were trying to figure out how we could be helpful when a ray of light shot through and we found out that the Harris County um, Commissioner's Court was in the process of setting up a um, drug court. Uh, they had uh, the space, they had some personnel that they were paying for, but they had provided no money for treatment. Mm. Can you believe this? And so we decided to jump into this and raise money so that the program could go forward. At that point, the cost was $6,500 for each individual to go through the two-year program, it's probably increased. Mm -hmm. And so um, Emerson appointed three people to be the first members of the board of a new organization called the Harris County Drug Court Foundation, which as you can obviously hear from the last word, our job was to raise money to help the drug court, to help all these people who had decided to become clean and go, go through the agony of it. But they had to because by their conviction, they had lost their family, they lost their, their spouse, they lost their children, they lost their job, they lost their apartment. I mean, it was just awful. And if they went through this program, they could come out clean. I love start it. over again. I love it. And and so in 2003, a social justice action or social justice task force started. And by 2006, my understanding was that foundation, your Harris County Drug Court Foundation that you and two other members of the church really got going, became a tax exempt organization. So that's excellent. And is it is what I read was, is it true that Yes, it cost $6,500 or it did at the time to, to take go through this two year program, but the cost of incineration, the uh, in, incarceration, the, the, you know, the other choice, you have a choice of going in jail or you have a choice of this two year program was upwards of $16,000. Well, $16,000 coming out of the state's pocket. Right. So uh, we took these people off their payroll in effect. <laughs> And um, we started them on the uh, road to uh, being a clean person and uh, the recidivism rate that we uh, came up with was much, much lower than if they had gone straight to jail. Now, some people wanted to go to jail because that's where they could get drugs. And that was the, that was, <laughs> That, that was really something. And, but the, it, but it for was those who wanted with, help, right, those who wanted to help themselves. It was a hard road for them to help themselves. To quit um, having drugs is, is very, very difficult. And we, we taught them how to do it. That is excellent. So you have lower recidivism rate and you're saving taxpayer money by giving people a chance at uh, getting rid of their addiction, learning, relearning how to live in society and, and becoming an, a, a good citizen. That is excellent. Um, so that answers, I think, most of the real question. The next question I had was, what's the real power of this drug court foundation and what is it solving? Um, I think you've gone, what else do you have to add to that? Well, we have uh, graduated over 800 drug addicts. Uh, Virtually, most of them are clean today, but we have to say that some of them slip, slip back and we call that recidivism. 
but our recidivism rate is much lower than if they had gone to jail. So that's, that's really the good point. And um, I would like to tell you a short story that is a true story, but there were a bunch of us sitting in the jury box in the, fed, in the uh, criminal courts while the uh, drug court uh, was, uh, was holding a session. And we were observing what was going on and we could not believe the way the judge treated this person. He or she was on their side. He was congratulating them for the progress that, 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 that they were making. So uh, originally they had to start out once a week, but this, as it, it became clear that they were doing their work, it, the, uh, the, the, the report status uh, lengthened. And at the end, of course, they had the graduation. And uh, at the graduation, it was so inspiring to see their friends and uh, relatives in the audience cheering and <laughs> tears came to your eyes to see this. Yeah, real story of hope, real story of hope. And, and that Emerson helped create this and that's, uh, that's exciting. Um, you've, have you done other big projects like this? I it seems like you like to work on big projects. Do you have visions for other big projects Emerson might consider working on? Yes. Um, we had one project that was um, started by a member, um, and um, her name is Deborah Landis. Some of you may remember her. She's not a member of the church anymore. I, I believe she left to take a new job. And no, nope, she, she she's a still a member. Deborah Wartring. She goes by oh, her maiden name. Still a member. Oh yes. Okay. Well, great. So she decided that we had an opportunity to teach English uh, to people in the community who uh, were maybe Spanish speaking or Asian speaking. And she individually by herself started um, the Emerson uh, English as a second language program. That's and nice. at one point they were, they were, they, they were 15 instructors and administrators. Uh, Deborah ran the show and there were a hundred of these folks coming, driving to Houston. They filled the parking lot. And um, unfortunately, COVID hit us and we had to shut it down. But there's still hope that there's still- We yep. have an opportunity coming up, which I'll mention in, in, uh, in a second or two. Yep. So we we have done big things at Emerson, and uh, I know that there's a plaque in Westwood Hall honoring uh, honoring the 81 contributors who made this Harris County Drug Court Foundation uh, launch and and start helping these people in their lives. Well, not only that, years. but they every time I go to the annual meeting, they they introduce me. I stand up. They cheer. And they have renamed uh, one of their programs, which was a community award program, the Emerson Community Award Program. So I thought that was really neat. And then last um, annual meeting, they gave me a crystal plaque that was, uh, we try to have, have tried to uh, locate <laughs> up in the uh, second floor in the offices, but we haven't, but it's there. And when we find it, we're going to be putting that plaque up uh, out, uh, at, at the entrance to Delaney Hall, where we are commem commemorating the 61 Emersonians who contributed to the beginning. And now they are, we have actually moved off the board because it has become so popular. People have recognized what's going on here. Well and, and that's what I understand that that's why in 2020 they, they named it to just it forward is the new name for the, the this whole process and the um, and we should have mentioned that the star stands for uh, come on Dory uh, the star program is 
success through addiction recovery. That's the STAR program that the foundation funds and that they are now in 18 county specialty courts. So what you birthed in 2003 has grown throughout the county. It's grown tremendously as people began to see what its value was. And if you come to the annual meetings, you'll hear the stories and uh, they'll collect some money from you. Uh, that's where they get their money from. Um, so that's the kind of support, right? Sheriff. That's the kind of support that Emersonians can give uh, is ongoing support. And this month through Share the Plate, they can give. And I will, uh, this interview will be part of a um, class and I will make sure the links to Justice Forward are, are in there for people listening. Um, Okay, so so, um, is there anything else you want to share with us? Thank you. And but first, I should say thank you, Gabe. Thank you for the vision, for the willingness to work to create this uh, entity that really has such an impact on people's lives here in Houston. Thank you. Well, it's been it's been a glorious pleasure pleasure for me, especially when I think about Emerson's own mission statement which says that we want to build a better world. Mm -hmm. And as everyone goes home tonight uh, or later this afternoon in their car, they should be thinking about that. How do we build a better world? Now we have two new, we started the Drug Court Foundation. Foundation. We have the uh, teach English as a second language. The third part of it is something also that Emerson started they tried to, uh, it was tried to start several years ago, it didn't work. But three of us, um, Larry Hulbig, myself, and uh, Mark Edmondson Lang, called a meeting in Austin to introduce the idea of a statewide justice ministry to work specifically on the Texas legislature to let them know that there are liberal voices and liberal choices who are interested in helping them draft new laws or oppose laws that were promoted by a bunch of evangelical churches. So we have a half-time minister, um, Chuck Freeman, who is a dynamic fellow, and I wish we could pay him more. We only, we, we, he works, he works full time and he gets half time pay, but he's also trying to start a church in Round Rock, Texas. So, um, but uh, Chuck goes around Texas giving sermons, and every time he talks at Emerson, when he finishes, he is applauded. I have never seen that in my all my years as a as a Unitarian person. That Chuck uh, represents the best of the ministers who really do the stuff that they're supposed to do. So Chuck has recruited thirty five uh, Unitarian groups around Texas. Now some of them are quite small, and some of them. Uh, are just fellowships, but he goes around and he works those places. He gives sermons. And uh, when he goes to the state legislature to testify at a committee hearing, he'll start by, he'll start by saying, my name is Chuck Freeman and the chairman, and this is, a, this is an actual uh, happening, the chairman says, oh, we know who you are, Reverend Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> so he has made his mark there. Well, and is that the Texas Justice UU Ministry, right? That's that's what you're referring to. Yes. And and we are Emerson. Yes, is a, a contributor and and a voice. Yes. I love that what you said. Liberal voices for liberal choices. I just that's that's good. And to know that we have a presence there at the state house is and a thing. And, and we started this, and um, so we should feel feel very proud. Good. Now, and, go ahead. Well, I'm just, I'm gonna wrap this up because we don't wanna to spend too too long here. We want people to have a chance for discussion. Um, but I, I want to just acknowledge that 
Emerson grows and changes all the time. And right now I'm really glad that we have a the uh, Council on Social Action being led by Ellen Norton. And later um, this fall, she will be talking about ways that we all can volunteer and make have big impacts like you are uh, setting the example here for us today. And so uh, uh, that gives me hope too. Uh, parting words, Gabe, what would you like to leave us with? Well, I'd like to close out by saying we have an opportunity in 2022 to join a very thriving organization that I am so proud of that it's in our uh, neighborhood called the Memorial Assistance Ministries. And the um, Ellen Norton and his group uh, recommended that we join that several months ago and it's been bouncing around the board and I can't figure out why we can't. I can give you a heads up on that. Okay. That um, at the meeting that we had when it was voted on, it was voted to be postponed because there was some internal, we had to make sure we were doing the right process. So the board is working on the right process to decide how um, we as a church decide on whether or not to join organizations like MAM. So the process is being worked on and the commitment at the last meeting was that at the next congregational meeting, we will have a vote, we will have that vote. So patience is some, some of these big ideas take time. So right. patience until I think it's the January congregational meeting. More to come on that. Okay, good. Sounds good. I right. vote, for, the, I vote uh, for us joining and I hope that a lot of others understand the impact of joining a very successful charity that uh, works for 28,000 Hispanics and Asian people who are impoverished. And there's no better way to build a better world than to work with a group like that. Yes, thank you, Gabe. All right, uh, thank you all. We will uh, end this and, and Gabe, thank you again for your time. Appreciate you. All right, bye-bye.